guys respond better to what's called shoulder to shoulder therapy. Like if we're doing something together, we're more likely to be in deeper conversation, whether it's golf, basketball, whatever it is, yoga, it seems that as though guys are more willing to open up and talk and develop that sense of community when they're doing something. We are here on the Erectile Dysfunction Radio Podcast with another episode. Today we are joined by Jake Panasevich. Jake is a health science journalist, a yoga teacher, and a pelvic floor specialist. He developed a specialized form of yoga designed for men and other people with, uh, we'll call them flexibility challenges. I count myself among that group. Uh, today he joins us to discuss the role of yoga in men's health, men's sexual health, and in the uh, treatment of and resolution of erectile dysfunction. So Jake, thank you very much for joining us. Mark, it's a real pleasure. Thanks for the invite. It's an honor to be here. Of course. So um, just to get us started, Jake, can you share with our listeners a little bit more about what it is that you do, your journey getting into yoga, and how that led you to specializing in men and men's sexual health? Yeah, sure. <clears throat> so I'm a, uh, a health journalist for US News. As you had mentioned, I write about healthy lifestyle choices that are free or low cost to consumer that anyone can do that are linked to evidence-based medicine or research. And I also am a, a yoga teacher of 17 years now. And yeah, that's primarily what I do. I also offer wellness seminars for different companies, private health companies and organizations. And um, going way back to how I found yoga, um, you know, I grew up a a farm kid, grew up on 300 acres, didn't even know what yoga was. And then as once I uh, finished college, I had wrestled my whole life and in, in college. And so after college, I was seeking out something to keep me fit and healthy without wrecking my body. So I had three knee surgeries. I was really in chronic pain with my low back. And that was really affecting everything, my mood, my mental health. You know, even though I didn't realize it in the time at the time, it was really really affecting my whole livelihood. And so like a lot of guys, I was dragged to my first yoga class, kicking and screaming. <laughs> and so I like to say, however, you know, looking back at it, I was definitely seeking, I was definitely seeking something to keep my body and mind healthy without continuing to hurt my body. Um, and all the old ways I was used to working out, like lifting weights, running, None of that was accessible anymore because of the, my injuries. And so after I took that class, I had no idea what had happened. I'm sure I was doing the poses incorrectly, but I could tell you that for the first time in a long time, it, I had gotten a workout and I felt great, surprisingly no pain afterwards. And that sent me on this journey. And so I continued, I, I started trying this yoga out, giving it a real shot, practicing it, you know, nearly every day for a year. And then I ended up hurting myself practicing yoga. Um, it was a faster paced, hot yoga, um, vinyasa. And uh, I was trying to keep up with the other students around me, which were, as you would imagine, mostly women, mostly more flexible than me, come to find out you know, a lot of them were yoga teachers or even some of them dancers. And, and so, you know, after that, I really kind of made it a, a point to find different styles of yoga, different trainings, the right teachers to help me give me the right tools and alignment for my body as a man. And this sent me on a, a decade long journey of, of finding the right teachers, programs, modifications that were right for me. And, um, and so, yeah, then once I went through that, I started to package that into a men's yoga class, which I started in Philly. And so um, started a men's yoga class that come to find out there was a big need there. The class grew to up up to over 150 guys in a year. Um, yeah. And, you know, I taught some of the sports teams has really caught on uh, like the Eagles, the Phillies, the Philadelphia Union. And um, and yeah, I like to say, you know, I I like to teach yoga to those who are the most inflexible, most inexperienced, the most injury prone. And so those are my people. And um, 
and yeah, that's that's a uh, long story long, but that's how we are. <laughs> yes, I count I count myself among that group. Um, you know, I, I was not uh, you know endowed with with a tremendous amount of flexibility. Um, and I know that makes me prone to injury. I've spent some time in PT. I've also been in yoga. Um, when you describe that first time that you went to yoga, that feeling of like somebody drags you there, also talking about, I think, what is a common experience for guys like myself or other guys who end up in yoga is that they are uh, wildly outnumbered uh, by women. Right. Um, so can you speak to some of the common misconceptions about yoga and in particular, some of the misconceptions as it pertains to men and men's health? Sure. So I think, you know, the biggest, most common stereotype in yoga is that I'm not flexible. I can't do yoga. Right. And so, you know, it's always the case that the more inflexible you are, the more that yoga is going to benefit you. And you know, there's a, a lot of stigma that comes around with a, a yoga class and even a yoga studio. And I think it's warranted, frankly, where you enter a yoga studio and there's a lot of spiritual talk, there's incense, a lot of things that I think us guys really resist. <laughs> and so, you know, I always say for men, it's very important that you find the right teacher and the right teacher often looks something like you do. Another guy, if a lot of guys, I think, resonate with me because they see me and they say, oh, you know, he doesn't look like maybe what we would think a stereotypical yoga teacher might look like. Bigger guy, former athlete, all these injuries. And, you know, I think it's there's all these feasibility studies that show, especially with veterans, that they're way more there's way more resonance when they go to a yoga class with another veteran. And I think it's the same with the guys where, you know, they see somebody who looks like them, has a similar experience as they do. And I think that does go a long way, especially in uh, the yoga world. That's, you know, just, just kind of helpful. I know a lot of guys are uh, initially very resistant to the idea of yoga. And I mean, it sounds like you've had success at, at creating a form of yoga or getting men to understand how it can be of benefit to them. Now, as we move over into like the a little bit more of the sexual health space, how does yoga specifically address some of the like you know physical aspects of sexual function or ed in men yeah sure so you know a, a lot of this interweaves with my writing that i, I connected with um, a pelvic floor health specialist and doctor as a mutual friend i believe dr susie gronsky who's exceptional and uh, she's really helped me become more aware of these benefits that yoga brings forward in sexual health for men. And the biggest one is honestly our, our mental health and psychology. And, you know, yoga is one of those wonderful forms of exercise that really does help with your mental health, really does help calm you down, calm your nervous system. You know, there's a built in meditation, both in the beginning and the end that I think a lot of exercise misses. And I think that is first and foremost, the most important thing. You know, it's uh, a very much uh, a benefit for our mental health. And then, you know, there's the physical aspect of it. If you're strong and limber, confident, I think that all comes into play in your, again, psychology, but also just your ability to be healthy enough for sexual activity. And, and so those, I think, are the main ones. Some of the positions themselves are, you know, similar to what you might experience during sex. And so... It's all helpful in bringing awareness to your body, your mind, how you're feeling, and this your ability to communicate with your partner. I think too, the this self awareness naturally brings forward this uh, this confidence and this willingness to be vulnerable and to have difficult conversations. That you know, I think yoga does an exceptional job of interweaving all all three the the mental, physical, and emotional well being. Yeah. So, so if I'm hearing you correctly, Jake, it sounds like the benefits of yoga, which can be both mental and physical, broadly speaking, can help position a person um, who's struggling with really any form of sexual uh, function issues or any other sexual health concerns. It can put them into a better space, both in terms of how they feel about themselves, but also with some of the mental benefits. Now, you mentioned some of the specific poses may uh, mimic or may be very similar to uh, poses that are involved in uh, sexual activity or partnered sexual activity. 
Are there any yoga poses in particular when a guy is facing ED that are known to be specifically helpful either by uh, releasing muscle tension uh, in particular areas that might have a role in ED? Um, is there anything that we know about specific yoga positions? Yeah. So again, this does come from my conversation with science experts and physical therapists in the male pelvic floor health uh, realm. But I'll say in conversation with them and bringing in my yoga background, speaking with them, what we sort of unpacked is that just bringing awareness when you even have take a comfortable seat in yoga, bringing your awareness to your pelvic floor and noticing, you know, your breath and how this contracts and expands this region of the body. Some guys don't even have any sort of sense of that part of themselves unless they've really made it a point to attune. And so that is the, I think, very first step is just bringing in that awareness just by taking a comfortable seat and noticing your breath. And then certain poses like a plank, like a, a cobra, bridge pose, those sort of pose, lunge, low lunge. And then again, bringing some awareness to the pelvic floor region while you practice these poses is, uh, is crucial and, and actually holding them a little bit longer. I think a lot of yoga sort of just flow and go one breath here, one breath there, you're in and out. And then, and especially for guys too, it's, it's very difficult to align period that way. But especially if you're trying to, you know, find these benefits point A to point B and bring some awareness around, you know, the pelvic floor specifically, um, you're going to want to hold the poses a little bit longer. So those are some of the poses that, that I would recommend starting with, you know, just bringing some awareness um, to that region even. Yeah. So it's well known that stress is oftentimes a major, if not primary contributing factor to uh, sexual function challenges, performance anxiety is, you know, well established um, for many guys. Now, yoga is oftentimes like spoken about as a stress reducer. Mm. Um, can you speak a little bit to how yoga helps to decrease or mitigate stress for people? Sure. So <clears throat> I think for guys, especially the exercise component of yoga is very beneficial. And the fact that it's a safe way to exercise, a way that brings you into movement that if you've got the right teacher, again, it's safe and effective and gets you moving and breathing. And um, you can't understate the benefit of, of movement and exercise in general. In my opinion, you know, yoga is a very safe exercise that most guys of a certain age who come to yoga practice with injury or aches and pains, which is nearly everyone, you know, yoga just allows you to enter an exercise in a way that's slower, safer, and you're getting this, your heart rate up, you're bringing, you're getting your awareness to your breath, your body moving again, more limber and strong. So that all in itself has a stress reduction component. Then you bring in the awareness of your breath, learning how to downregulate your nervous system while you're in these poses that are, for a lot of guys, very uncomfortable at first, right? And so you learn how to, in these more stressful moments where you're not entirely sure what's going on in the class, you're trying to listen to the teacher, but you're brought back to deepening your breath, calming yourself down. Okay, that, it's, that also is a major benefit in stress reduction. And then there's several other components that I think get overlooked. One of them for guys is the community aspect. Many guys, myself included, love this Lone Ranger narrative, like we're going to do it ourselves. And um, however, you know, there's all kinds of numbers now, of the level of loneliness amongst men. Men have fewer social connections than women as they age. And, you know, yoga is a great way. I think guys respond better to what's called shoulder to shoulder therapy. Like if we're doing something together, we're more likely to be in deeper conversation, whether it's golf, basketball, whatever it is, yoga, it seems that as though guys are more willing to open up and talk and develop that sense of community when they're doing something rather than 
maybe sitting down face to face for for coffee. I know myself, I tend to grit my teeth if someone's like face to face having a conversation sometimes. I'm like, why is this so difficult? And come to find out this more sort of shoulder to shoulder therapy, go on a hike, do something active. You can still make eye contact, but doing something actually helps men specifically start to um, develop these deeper, more meaningful sense sense of community and connection. Yeah, that's, that does sound really, really powerful. And I'm sure in a group of over 100 or 150 men all kind of coming together. And <laughs> I assume there has to be a fair amount of encouragement to stay in these poses and to get into these poses in the first place. You're saying that it kind of is a uh, bonding and camaraderie experience that might be hard to replicate in other places. So for a lot of times when I, I it certainly was my experience. It takes a bit of a, a health crisis to even get the idea of yoga floated to a guy. And I remember when, when it was recommended to me, I you know felt pretty hesitant about it because I I you know grew up playing sports and that's how I got injured. And the idea of me now going to yoga, which is supposed to be like less taxing on certain areas of the body while like you know stretching others just didn't quite sit well with me. So I'm wondering, like, what advice do you have for men who may feel hesitant or uncomfortable about incorporating yoga into their health routine? And in particular, you know, the other crisis that men sometimes face has to do with sexual function. So if they're advised to engage in yoga for sexual function, but feel uncomfortable about this, what would you say to them? Yeah, boy, that's a tough, you know, it is a tough one because I often go to yoga classes now just to see, you know, what's going on in the field. I like to be in the, the yoga studios and um, I'll tell you, I often wonder myself, would I still come back to if I first found yoga <laughs> by coming to some of these classes? It's tough. It really is tough. You've really got to Find, again, the teacher that resonates most with you. It really makes a major difference if you find the right teacher. And so I always advise guys to seek out teachers, again, that, that have a similar background as they do. Go ahead and read a teacher's bio and see, you know, oh, they've done athletics. They've done sports. They're a more alignment-based, focused class. And don't go in blind, even though I know this... Sometimes it isn't the perfect world like me. I got dragged to my first class. I didn't even know what it was. <laughs> and so, but I just advise guys to give it a couple shots and and give it a chance and find um, a class that generally slows down more. Even if it's like labeled gentle, you'll still get the benefits. You know, you don't have to go head first into the fast power yoga or hot yoga first, even though there's so much evidence now behind hot yoga and depression that it's unbelievable, but sometimes that could be a little overbearing for guys. So, and I'd say, give it a, a real, a real chance. Go to the classes that are maybe a little bit slower. Doesn't again mean necessarily easy by any means and notice, you know, how you feel afterwards and and yeah, I, that's, I guess that's my biggest suggestion is to start slow, find the right teacher <clears throat> and, um, and yeah, give it a fair shot. It's, it's definitely worth it. You'll notice things that you wouldn't even guess that you were, um, that were affecting your well being. Some folks are in stress and they have no idea that it's costing them their nagging back pain or, or mm -hmm. their mood, you know, until they're out of it and, and everything starts to shift. Now, Jake, are there any lifestyle factors or lifestyle changes that you think complement the yoga and in particular around sexual function? Mm. Like, is there anything that you recommend to the people that you work with, instruct or coach in this yoga journey? You know, and it's nothing that would probably shock you, but it's, you know, better sleep. A lot of folks notice that very soon after starting a yoga practice that they're able to sleep and that really shifts their entire mental landscape and really starts to bring their health to a whole nother level. As they start to progress more in yoga, they notice they started to naturally shift their diet, that they want to start eating better naturally. And so things like a healthier diet, better sleep, and then those who are really longing, a lot of guys like remember when they used to play sports and, you know, I really miss playing soccer and I cannot do it anymore. And there's like almost a void there. 
um, as they get more out of pain, clear of injury, they get more confidence to go ahead and go for a walk, go ahead and start to jog, maybe sign up for that rec soccer league. And, um, and yoga also makes you particularly skillful at kind of tempering your ego to the point where you're not going so full, full bore exercise that you end up injuring yourself ideally. And so those are the other components that I, I recommend, uh, men specifically start to implement, to supplement their yoga practice. And they do, they do start to uh, happen naturally. There's this cascade effect as they, they practice yoga. Jake, I don't know to what degree you work specifically with men with sexual dysfunction, but do you happen to have like a success story or a transformative experience that you were witness to or a part of that person's journey who went ahead and incorporated yoga as part of a broader strategy or approach to make like changes and to be able to overcome, let's say, a sexual dysfunction? Sure. You know, I am not necessarily in that role exactly as far as like talking about super intimate stuff, but I will say it's been hinted at for sure with many guys um, talking about relationships and marriages. And, you know, I have had guys like to kind of joke when they bring this stuff up to not take it so seriously. And um, it's been said in jest, but it's it's definitely been said by many of my um, students, you know, not not so serious and in such a serious format. I think that's kind of the way us guys operate socially. And um, I kind of become friends with and closer to a lot of the guys I've taught for over a decade now. And um, in so many words, you know, there's been this. It's been more than more than implied. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and it, and it is a communication of like, you know, this is not only physically, wow, I feel like a super, like I've got superpowers now, but also, you know, I was able to have some difficult conversations. I was able to lean in to get a little bit more help when I needed it. And yeah, so I think, yeah, more than implied, it's, there's been more of, of, of that sort of um, progression that they've talk, talked about with me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like, again, yoga is a something that could be part of a more comprehensive lifestyle shift that, again, a lot of guys, when they when they do experience sexual dysfunction like ED, do oftentimes look at life and do an overhaul. They come to therapy. They uh, may make dietary changes, exercise, health and yoga, it sounds like, is, you know, one of the things that men do seem to benefit from once they're engaged in it. I, I, I know from my own experience of yoga when I was in it, I was surprised by the benefits. I didn't get that much better at it, I don't think, over time. I still was rather inflexible, but I did see just like across the board, like both mental and physical benefits. Um, and I think certainly um, even just from the anxiety and distress that men experience when encountering a sexual dysfunction, Having a practice like yoga in their lives can help to just kind of calm the, the general system. It can help to restore confidence and it can help people to feel good. And it sounds to me like, Jake, that, that would be one of the primary roles of yoga for men who find themselves in this situation. I think that's right. And, and I think, you know, yoga is often the cornerstone habit once you're in it that holds all the other things together. Whether you say that yoga is something that like me has become my absolute livelihood it is it might not be like the thing you say you love per se, but it, for a lot of guys, I think it's almost like brushing your teeth at some point. It's like, you know, I, it's habit, something you do. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Jake, this has been very, very helpful. That's definitely an area that we have not covered up until now. Um, but just in terms of promoting broader, you know, healthy practices that I do think lead to, overall better outcomes for people's lives, but certainly help to improve, address, and ultimately maintain good, healthy sexual function. So once again, thank you very much for joining us. This has been very informative. Mark, it's been my pleasure. Thanks for having me on. 